to another episode of Candid, where we have real talks with real people. I'm Anise. I'm here with Dudley, Shanae, and Bethany. And today we have a guest. Um, I came across her on TikTok as I was, you know, watching TikToks. And I thought her um, her video was very inspirational. She was talking about um, problems she has faced after graduating and finding a job and basically being a part of Orange Economy, which is more um, the production, very creative side of work. Um, so today we're here with Catherine Gomez. Do you want to introduce yourself? No problem. So my name is Catherine Gomez. Like you said, I'm 22 years old and I graduated from the University of the Bahamas last year, May. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And this has been a great journey. I've always been passionate about um, video production, social media marketing, and just content creation as a whole. And I must say, UB equipped me with all the skills needed to, you know, enter the creative industry. So now I have entered the working world. I'm sure UB is so happy that one of their graduate, one of their alumni can come on some form of platform and be like, yeah, the school prepared me for this. I'm excited for it. Yes, it certainly did. I must say UB was incredible. The lecturers I had in the media journalism department were phenomenal. And they really definitely just prepared us for the real world. So I totally have to say I loved UB. At some points it was stressful, of course, but overall I loved it. Do you mind talking about your struggles um, at UB? <laughs> Okay, let me go back in the archives. Okay, I would say the struggles I had with UB would be definitely one of the main ones, of course, was registration. You know, that was very, very stressful at times. And, you know, the process that you had to do in terms of standing on the long lines in the hot sun, you know, I would say that was one of the worst experiences that I had. And hopefully it has gotten better. But that definitely, you know, was hard because you don't want to be registering and then you can't get into certain classes. That's a huge struggle. And then that delays you. Luckily, it didn't delay me. But of course, I had some serious belly breakdown moments when I was trying to register for a class at a certain time and with a certain lecturer, and then I couldn't get into that class. So I would say that had me having panic attacks in the middle of the night. <laughs> and that was one of, the, um, one of the most stressful moments that I would have had. Let me think of anything else. Um, I would say, honestly, I can't think of another struggle other than registration, to be honest. So you trying to tell me that no class, I, you ain't got to say no lecture, <laughs> but no class, you sat and you was like, boy, this me, this class could take me out, eh? <laughs> um, no. Well, um, right, me, she's a real me, student. She's a great student. Give me, student. Good at <laughs> give me, give me Catherine, I just, uh -huh. need, I just need one thing from you. Um, I need you to give me your brain, please. I need oh your positivity and energy <laughs> so that I myself can enjoy the last of my time at the University oh of the Bahamas. Goodness. I wish the only struggle was registration. <laughs> wow. Oh, I man, I wish I could just give you some comfort and joy right now because, man, y'all making me sad. <laughs> <laughs> to hey. hear these struggles oh geez hey. i feel so too though a lot of lectures that was here during Catherine's time isn't here now and mm. so, so i wouldn't say it's a negative but it's very challenging oh okay i get you oh gee um so Catherine, do you mind if i ask why did you choose journalism because obviously you really enjoyed the major itself but what was the reason mm -hmm. that you chose to do it Okay, that's a great question. So in high school, I always enjoyed um, English. I've also always had a passion for acting, singing, um, anything creative related. So I always wanted to do something in that field, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly what job would pay the bills in the Bahamas, especially. And 
something that I also could be passionate about. So my mom and I were um, brainstorming one day when I was in grade 12 and we were like, okay, let's look at some job options. And we came across journalism and she was like, you know, journalism could be the perfect fit for you because you love to sing, you love to act, you love to write, and you could infuse all of those different things into journalism. So I decided to do the media journalism program. And as I did it, I was like, oh my goodness, I love this. That's where I found my love for um, video production, being on the camera and behind the scenes. And then I also got to use my talents of singing, acting as well in journal journalism because we get to do, of course, if you need to do a commercial, you can do that. If you need to do a podcast, you can do that. If you need to sing a jingle, you get to do that in digital media and journalism. So that was how I found my love for it. I noticed the distinct lack of the reporting thing. So you didn't. So that whole time, you never wanted to do any of the reporting, but that creative side, that really just reached out and grabbed you in. Yes, I would say now with reporting, so I initial, initially didn't want to jump into reporting. I really didn't know much about it to jump into it, right? But I really found my love of reporting when I, um, I think, probably in first year, but I really, really was like, wow, I could do this when I interned at ZNS because that's where I really got the hands-on experience of reporting and broadcast journalism. And what I liked about reporting was that I could do, of course, again, you know, the acting, the singing, all of those creative elements, I could do that with reporting. So I did really, really enjoy that. So on your TikTok, you talked about um, your struggles with getting your work permit or no study permit. It was a study mm -hmm. permit, right? Yes. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like the school you were choosing to go to, um, what top, what major you were trying to finish your master's in and why it was so difficult to get your study permit? Okay. So after I graduated from UB, well, no, not after, but while in my last year of UB, I decided that I wanted to further my studies. And so I decided that I would do post-production at a school in Canada. It's a post-production program because I love video production. I love editing. And I wanted to really develop my skills in production because I really love video production. And so I was all psyched up about it I was very very excited and so I had to get all of my documents in order and I had to apply for a study permit it's basically a study visa but in Canada it's called a study permit and so I had to apply for that and even before I applied I noticed that the Canadian government was saying that because of COVID they have major delays in processing the study permits so I was like, oh, gee, this is going to be, this might be hectic. I mightn't get this in time. But I applied and everything. And I was like, trust in God for me to get it in time. And I was, you know, excited because this would be my first time in a different country. I mean, studying in a different country and being out on my own without my family, living on my own and learning um, the skills I really wanted to have by professionals in this field. So I was very excited about it, but unfortunately I didn't receive my study permit in time for school. And with the school I was applying to, if you're not able to go in the first week of classes, you had to basically withdraw from the program and you would have to either apply again next year. And so after not being able to go to that school anymore, I was, of course, very devastated and disappointed because I was like, oh my goodness, you know, that was my plan. And I didn't have a backup plan. So I was like, what am I going to do now? You know? And so after I got over the many tears and, you know, feeling like, wow, my whole plan has messed up, I was like, you know what? You know, rejection is God's protection. And maybe He was just saving me from something. Maybe He was saving me by 
from all the craziness that might have been happening in Canada. I don't know what the rationale was, but this obviously happened for a reason. So instead of focusing on being sad about it, I was like, okay, time to make a plan B. And so I decided that, of course, I need to work because I have a family and I can't be asking my parents for money here and there. So I was like, you know what? I need to work. And so then I decided to apply to places in my field. And as I applied, a lot of places were saying, you know, that they're not hiring right now. And hearing that over and over and over, that was very discouraging. And I'm like, wait, I thought after I graduated from UV, it would be so easy to just get a job like that. But it wasn't the case. So I'm hearing rejection over rejection. We're not hiring. We're not hiring. And, you know, that was getting very, very frustrating. I was like, what is going on? And I even went to the mall one day and one of my classmates who graduated with me, she was like, girl, I have the same problem. I've been applying to places here and there. This one ain't hiring or this one won't pay me, pay me basically pennies. And she was like, I dealing with the same thing. And so even though I was sad to hear that, I was like, wow, it ain't only me who's dealing with this problem. So I was like, wow, this is a serious thing. And so I kept applying again, rejection over rejection. So I was like, okay, at this point, I can't be unemployed no more. I got to just apply to any old thing. So I started applying online for jobs, didn't hear anything back. The same thing week after week, didn't hear anything. So at that point, I was like, you know what? I can't lean on my own understanding anymore. And I just have to like put this in God's hands, cast my cares on him and just give it to him. So I decided to make a prayer, what I call a job prayer. And I asked God in that prayer, I was like, Lord, please <laughs> help me. I need you. Please help me to get a job that I would be passionate about, a job that would be in a nice environment, a job that would have um, great people to work with, a job where I would get to do things that I genuinely love. And so I prayed that prayer for months. I think about maybe like two, two to three months. And eventually I was driving one day and I passed this media company. And I was like, hmm, let me send this company an email. Let me check them out. And so I emailed them and I didn't hear back. I, well, I emailed them and I sent them my resume and I was asking them if they were hiring. And so days later on a Saturday, I'm out with a couple friends and I get this call and I wasn't going to answer it because I was like, who this number is? This might be a killer, especially if the person number coming up, I'm like, I know who this is. I'm not answering this. But I was like, you know what? Something in me was like, answer it because you've been applying to jobs. So just answer it. And so I answered and the company called me. They were like, they spoke to one of the references I had listed and she gave me a glowing review. So they were like, they have to meet with me. And they organized a job interview with me. I went to the job interview. They were very impressed with me and gave me an offer right on the spot. And I was like, this has to be God. Because even when I walked into the building, I was like, oh my goodness, this is the place that I would love to work. And I was, as I was speaking to the employers too, I was like, these people, they were incredibly nice. They were kind, they were vibrant souls. And I was just like, oh my goodness, these, pe these people, if they were my bosses, I would be so happy because they're just so kind. And you could just see they were like creative geniuses as well. And then the office space, they have a studio and just the office is like no office I've ever seen. It's super creative, beautiful, vibrant, all of that stuff. So in my head, I'm going to the job interview and I'm like, wait, I have to work here. If I don't get this job, I could cry. But anyway, they offered me it. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is God. And a phrase they said to me or something they said to me, how I really knew it was God was that they said, wow, you are a God sent because we have been looking for someone with your qualifications. 
and we haven't had any luck, but we know that you are a godsend because every all the skills you possess is what we need at this company. So when they said that, I was about to fall on my knees and just cry, but I was like, hold it together, hold it together. <laughs> you in a job interview now, relax. And so I, when I got home, I was just super thrilled and super happy. And I was like, you know what? I have to share this testimony with someone because I feel like so many other students are in this um, predicament of trying to look for a job and they can't find anything and they may be getting discouraged, especially with this pandemic too. So many people are unemployed. So it's like, I have to find a way to give people hope and just to tell them, you know, in situations like this, you have to cast your cares on the Lord. So I was like, you know what? Let me make a TikTok video. And so got all my props, got all my outfits and I recorded the TikTok. And I was like, I really didn't expect it to do as well as it did. But I was like, you know, even if it could just touch one person, I'll be happy. That was the mindset that I had. And before I knew it, it blew up. And so many people in the comments were like, this encouraged me. I'm going through the same thing. You know, this gives me hope. And just to see all those beautiful comments with people, I didn't even know saying that it encouraged them and it gave them hope. Like that meant the world to me, you know? And I was so happy to just be able to share my faith and to share my testimony with others. So that's how that all went down I know I've been talking for ages but yeah that is how everything went down that's very insightful yeah it is I remember I was looking on on TikTok and you showed up on my for you page and I watched it and I was like wow that's crazy it's like I'm really I looked at it and I was like I'm really afraid to graduate in a couple of of months (laughs) because I'm like if, if some people it's either you get a job from your internship or like you gotta wait a couple of months I was like that's kind of scary because what if I don't find something in my field or something that I actually want to do? And then I sent the video to Nice and she was like, oh, we should interview it. <laughs> we should talk about this. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's how that happened. <laughs> um, I have a question. So I know that you said that you didn't get to go off to school. So mm-hmm. do you still plan on going or maybe doing online or, or like what's your plan with that? Okay, so that is super crazy because I was telling the employers that I initially planned to go off to school and they were like, well, we are trying to implement a program at their business where they actually send their employees off to school. So whatever program you want to do, wherever it is, they will finance that and they will, of course, take care of all the bills and everything and allow you to do your certification or your master's or whatever it is. So I was like, wow, God created an avenue. If I still decide to right now, I feel like that's, I'm not with the climate of the pandemic and stuff. I'm not too thrilled to go off to school right now anymore. But later on in life, you know, if that's something I still want to do, if I want to do my master's or certification, I will be able to if I stay at this company. So I thought that was another thing that really affirmed to me that, wow, this was God, because now that's still on the table if I decide to. And then something else you said as well, I wanted to point out with the internship. Now, I think the best thing you can do as a UB student is intern somewhere that you think you will love. Intern at, don't intern at just any old place. But make sure do your internship at a place that you could see yourself working in the long run. And I think that will definitely help you so that when you graduate, if you prove to the people or the company that you really work hard and that you would like to work there, you would have an easy transition from graduating and going right into working at that company. And that was also, I guess I should point out too, that I interned at ZNS. And so um, my time at ZNS was incredible. I learned so many different skills there. I mean, I interviewed people from all walks of life, was able to network and all that good stuff. And so they did offer me a contract to work there after after I had finished the internship. But what had happened was since I was going to school, I decided that, of course, I wouldn't be able to work there because I um, was going off to school. And they did say, you know, if you ever want to come back, you can 
And Zednas was really my family. So there was like, Catherine, whatever it is, you could always come back. But after I graduated from school, I really did some deep introspection. And I realized that I didn't want to do broadcast journal journalism anymore. So that's why I didn't decide to go back to ZNS because I decided I wanted to really be a content marketing specialist and not a reporter. And then the reporter life, I just felt like it wasn't for me anymore because it's so fast paced and it could be very, very stressful at times too. So I just decided I wanted to, to you know, not take that particular path anymore, that reporter path anymore. So that's what happened with the internship. But that's my main advice is to definitely internships are very important. And that's how many, many young people don't have to deal with the stress of, you know, after you graduate, you can't find a job. Because if you do the internship, that will be definitely be your key if you want to stay at that place. So yeah, that's my two cents on that. I can definitely relate to that because I feel like a lot of people our age we're not really interested in doing something that we don't care for because either you give like zero percent into something you Mm -hmm. don't care about or a hundred and twenty percent into something you do care about and it's scary because it could go you can go like so long without finding your passion that Mm -hmm. like because like at the end of the day you need money like money like but it's just scary to have to wait so long so it was kind of it was very inspirational it was like a godsend when I saw your video I was like okay let me not worry about it too much yeah I think a lot of me and Sinead basically we related on that we were like this is so crazy yeah wow I am so happy to hear that honestly I am super happy to hear that Bethany or um, Dudley do you have any questions for Catherine well I don't really have a question but so far Catherine has been noting to her spirituality and that for me wasn't really surprising. But apart from your education, your spiritual growth and you know your the religious aspects of who you are as a person, would you mind going into that? Because I think it would be remiss for you just to lightly speak about it instead of actually giving people your testimony. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't mind doing that. No problem at all. Okay. So you just want me to go into my faith just to speak about that. Yeah, just to give people a brief understanding of um, who you are as a Christian, because I know you're a Christian and I know you Mm -hmm. love to speak about your faith. So I wouldn't want you to leave the show without giving people, you know, that that side of you because it's a beautiful side. Oh, no problem. No problem. Okay, so I would say, of course, I grew up in the church. I come from a very spiritual family. I mean, my mom is just, I mean, she is the perfect example of a Christian. And so I've always had that amazing example in my life. And so that it was easy for me to always try to emulate that to always emulate um, those Christian values and her Christian character. But, you know, as I went into high school, of course, wanting to fit in and wanting to just conform to the bad ideologies that can be in high school, of course, I started to stray and I wasn't really um, upholding those Christian values and Christian characters. But because I still had that strong foundation of growing up in the church, I was always able back to go to God. So, okay, I'm getting bullied. Let me pray about it. Okay, I just failed that math test. Let me pray about it. And so I was able to always just go back to God when I needed help, when I needed comfort, when I needed peace. And so that was, I must say, that was easy for me to always go back to him. But I would say that um, a big moment in my life where I really, really had to just really get serious about my Christian journey, especially as a young person, was when I was in grade nine or 10, I believe. And I was basically cyber bullied. So what had happened was someone made a fake profile of me on Facebook and they used my pictures, my name, everything. 
And so what they started to do was to text people, text my classmates and my family members, like these nasty, demeaning, derogatory things. And people started believing that was me. And so this went on for a little while. A lot of my friends then turned their back on me. A lot of my, a lot of classmates who I weren't close to, of course, also was like, boy, Catherine, body, or she's be doing this, or she's be saying this. And so a lot of people started to question my character. And I was just the big talk of our grade. And so I'm like, what is going on? And so at one point, I just couldn't take it anymore because this impersonator had basically started a bunch of relationships with guys from my school and from other high schools. So I was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? And I then had to, I was keeping it a secret from my parents because I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to bring my parents in this. But I had to because it had reached a real, that really bad point with the person starting relationships with people and sending fake pictures and nasty stuff like that. And so I told my parents about it and they then had to go to the school and deal with the situation. And we ended up getting it resolved in terms of the person um, getting caught and the page being removed and them also announcing basically to peop some people in my grade that the person wasn't me, it was an impersonator. And so, of course, you know, the damage was already done to my reputation though, because even though the school might have tried to fix it, you know, people already thought, some people still thought it was me. It was still the laughing, <laughs> the big, biggest joke of our grade and so that happened and in that moment I was like when I couldn't look to no one especially even my friends and stuff like that I was like I have to get serious about my relationship with God because at the end of the day when no one is there with me when I cry in my bed and when I'm going through moments of people laughing at me and bullying me and just having the biggest joke off of my character the only person who is there with me is God. The only person there to wipe away my tears is my Lord Jesus Christ. So that's when I really, really, really got super serious about my relationship with God. And I was just like, you know what? He is truly all that I have. So from that day forward, of course, I wasn't the perfect Christian after that. But after that moment in my life, I was really like, you know, I really had to give Jesus my all. And so ever since that day, I got serious about my Christian, um, got serious about my Christian values and principles. And like I said, even when I slip up sometimes, I always try to give God everything. I always try to be involved in church ministry. I always try to live a life for the Lord and not for the world. And so that situation even though it was very, very hard to go through. I always see that as a test for my testimony. And I always look back at that when I face hardships today, I always look back at that and say, you know, if God was able to help me through that, I mean, I am unstoppable. I can go through anything and he will be there to help me and guide me. So that's my little, well, that ain't a little, but that's my <laughs> testimony. Uh, and you know how I really got serious with Jesus. Um, so speaking about your spirituality, did you face any issues with like, like working in the fields or just any company, any type of um, any type of job? Did you have any issues with um, your spirituality and like conflicting with work? Not at all. Not at all. I must say that. When I worked at ZNS doing that internship, because I was, it started off as an internship. That's what I need to clarify. It started out as an internship, but they actually hired me as an apprentice reporter. So I started, I started my internship there in my second year. And then after the summer internship, they hired me as an apprentice reporter and I worked there till I graduated. So that's how it went. And what I really loved about ZNS is they allowed me to be me and they allowed me to, in all my feature stories, I was able to incorporate
celebrate the Lord. And I so appreciate that for them. They never wanted me to downplay my relationship with God. And they always allowed me to incorporate that. And so I was very, very happy with that. Even when I got to um, have my own show called The Creative Buzz, which I hosted, produced, and I was my own camera woman as well. I was able to incorporate Jesus in every single episode. And so I've never had a conflict with that. And if I ever had a, uh, or I, if I ever have a job that doesn't allow me to talk about God or share my faith, I will be quitting that job effective immediately. So that's my views. <laughs> It's kind of hard to follow up the spirituality question. <laughs> question oh, that ain't about spirituality, you know? Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I was going to ask you, so you had an opportunity to go back to ZNS, but for a few months you were um, without a job. Do you think you would have ended up going back to ZNS if you really couldn't find a job? Or would it have, would it have been too like monotonous or too tiresome because you your heart wasn't in it? Um, yeah, I don't think I would have gone back just because, yeah, like you said, my heart wasn't in it. And then I just realized that it was, I just know my vision in life. And my vision, of course, was to settle down soon, start my family, and of course, still be a career woman, but I'm big on family. And I know the reporter life, you it's hard to start a family and have a family with having a life that's so busy, busy, hustle, bustle with being a reporter. And so I was just like, you know, I can't do that anymore because just that you have to be, you can get on calls in the middle of the night, 4 a.m. in the morning, you got to go here, you got to go to this crime scene, you got to do this. They could call you one day and say, hey, you got to go to, um, New Jersey in the morning or New York in the morning to film this conference and to cover this. And I was just like, you know, I can't do that. That's too taxing. And especially with the COVID pandemic too, I think that also helped me to make my decision because I was like, reporters have to put their life on the line every day. They're always putting themselves at risk. I mean, just look at the statistics of reporters and journalists who have died because they had to cover these crime scenes or they had to go in these dangerous places to cover stories and I was like you know what I cannot put my life on the line for a story so that's when, why really all those factors led me to deciding that you know broadcast journalism isn't the life that I want to live. Catherine you spoke earlier about your work prayer but it seems like you have a Ciara prayer you know <laughs> I know, working up your sleeve now. Oh, gee, I do. <laughs> I um, do as well, child. You need to write that prayer down and you can like send it to me. Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Actually, yes. to oh goodness. You got to pray for your future husband. Yes, you have to do that. That's so <laughs> very important. And, and that's the work one and the Sierra one. Yes. Just imagine somebody out there praying for Dudley. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> to the wrong person. Oh, the digs, the digs. Well, Catherine know me. Catherine, am I, am I that bad of a person? No, I know he's you like such a me. nice man, a nice gentleman. Upstanding I know, right? citizen. Of, of the Lord, an upstanding citizen of the Lord. Wow, at least up, Captain, please. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Man, your boy can't. Your boy can't talk about how he started to read the Bible without getting questioned. I cap him off. You know, no hat could fit on his head, girl. This is too big. Oh, oh my <laughs> what is this? Oh my but, gosh. But um, Catherine, I, I, I thought of a question. So since you, you know, you graduated and it took a little bit of time for you to get a, to get a job. Mm -hmm. So a lot of discussions around the future of the Bahamian economy um, it, it, uh, it's been suggested that we switch over to an orange economy. And obviously with the idea of wanting to be a content creator and a content marketer, you mm -hmm. had a firsthand experience of how hard it is to get a job in that field here now. So mm -hmm. um, do you see the future of the Bahamas being an orange economy or what are your thoughts on that? 
That is an excellent question. Um, that's a hard one. Because I would like to say, you know, the orange economy will grow so much and it will be such a successful industry. But it would be, it will require a lot of work and it definitely will require money as well. But I will say with this, because I'm an optimist and I will say that I believe with these, our young generation, these generations coming now, I believe that we are very resilient and a lot of us are so creative. So with that, I think we will be able to grow the orange economy. We will be able to grow the creative sector in the Bahamas because we're ready to definitely take the creative industry to new heights. I mean, just look at it. Look at They Call Me Tap, who graduated from UB. Look at King Cloud. Look, in, look at Christian Adam G. Look at Shea Butter on TikTok, who has garnered over millions of views on her videos. A Bahamian girl pushing Christian content who has gotten up over millions of views. I mean, I think definitely if all of us just band together, if all of us are unified and we want to genuinely build the creative industry, I think we will be able to do it, but it will definitely take unity. It will definitely take everyone just working together and it will definitely probably take help from the government too, to realize how vital having a creative industry is. And if they were able to just push the creative industry more and support us young creatives, I think that definitely it could grow in the Bahamas, but it will take all of those partners working together and just seeing the importance of it. I mean, it's kind of weird, the backpack now, <laughs> but I was, because <laughs> Dudley came in with this question, but I was going <laughs> to ask, <laughs> ask you about the vast difference between your working environment, because you were, you know, describing the fast life of a reporter, and I think you mentioned that you were a content market strategist, did mm -hmm. I get that right? Um, well, so content market, marketing professional. Professional, okay. So how, like, what does that entail, and how... Is it like night and day compared to reporting? Mm, yes, it's definitely night and day. I would say the first thing I definitely love about my content marketing professional job is that I'm able to work outside of the box. With ZNS or with broadcast journalism, I was confined to reporting. But with my job now, I'm able to be in front of the camera. I'm able to be behind the camera. I'm able to do social media marketing and management. I'm able to go in so many different areas of media. So that's what I really, really love about it. I'm also able to do a little bit of reporting in terms of interviewing people for different shows and segments. So I do still get a little bit of the reporter life, but just not as, you know, hustle and bustle, busy, busy, busy bee, you know? So I definitely love that about my job. I love that um, with this job I have now, it is nine to five, hallelujah because with reporter, that's 24 seven. And so I'm happy that it's nine to five and I'm able to have more of a balanced life in terms of work is balanced, family life is balanced, love life is balanced. I'm able to focus on all those different sectors. Whereas with reporting, I'm given reporting 24 seven and then I'm neglecting all of my other responsibilities. And not to say that, you know, some reporters don't balance it well, because I think there are many reporters who have been able to find that work-life family balance. But for me, I just felt like that wasn't for me. I will also say that even my environment too, the company that I work at now is just, it's a creative hub. It's a place where you can go to and just feel like you're being fueled creatively. Whereas um, previously, when you got to work, 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 your creative ideas getting drained, um, you want to go all the time, that's draining you mentally, emotionally, and physically. 
but the place I'm at now, I definitely feel like I'm fueled creatively. Um, even looking at our lunchroom, in our lunchroom, we have nice couches, we have a bunch of snacks. So if you just want to put your feet up and relax, you can do that. And so that feeds me physically, spiritually, and I just feel fueled when I go there. So that would be, you know, the differences in those two sectors. <laughs> I feel like you you were very um, informative and you, you, you answered a lot of questions that we didn't even have to ask. Um, oh, awesome. I will definitely follow y'all and support you guys. This is awesome that y'all are doing this. And if you guys need me for anything else, definitely just send me a text and I would be happy to help y'all. Okay, thank you. Um, it was great talking with you. I think you have given a lot of us hope, especially not Aww. even just college students, but I think just people graduated in general and trying to get their footing in the world. Um, so we wanna thank you for coming on our show. And no problem. How he's ended again. <laughs> <laughs> Every it was, time. It was in my head and it laughed, okay? <laughs> Every week we go through. Oh gee. <laughs> no no I guess. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning into another episode of Candid. Keep it real Bahamas.